All right. I was yelling and screaming at Ken for the last two or three days. Get off my back, get off my back. I'm tired. I got too much work to do because I had to get ready for this because this is a very important place for me to be. And I always go with the pressures. I just made this map like two or three days ago. Well, let's take a look at the world since 9-11 or the world the way it is today. Now, a few symbols. Stress point. Africa we'll deal with in a separate map. But everywhere you see flames, there's pending military uh, or very serious political stress. All since 9-11. Chinese investment in oil and gas. We're going to talk a lot about China tonight. Pending Chinese investment in oil and gas. Well, let's, let's just stop for a minute. Let's just talk about this. China, China's energy use went up 40% last year. China is now the second largest oil, excuse me, energy importer on the planet after the United States. Its economy is growing at 8, 9, 10% a year. China's already having blackouts. They're on a panicked global search for energy. They'll go wherever they have to to get it. China now has made some interesting investments. They're about ready to build a pipeline across uh, Burma, right here, so that all the oil tankers supplying China from the Persian Gulf no longer have to sail through the Straits of Malacca, a very narrow strait between like Singapore and Malaysia over here, which is one of the most crowded and, and mi militarily volatile points on the planet right now. Of course, that, the uh, tsunami kind of messed with that, and I, I, I don't have any theories about the tsunami. Um, <laughs> please. But the major stress is now coming with Japan, which is up here. Where did Japan go? There's Japan. Thank you. Up here. Japan and China. And we're going to talk about this because Russia just announced it was going to, after three years and much wrangling, Russia just said it's going to build a pipeline out here, which will, set, which will deliver its oil to Japan, and they can also sell to Indonesia, the Philippines, the, you know, uh, uh, Malaysia, all these economies, Australia down here, as opposed to building a pipeline right down here into China. Now, the game is not over yet. Recently, by the way, we had, a, a, as the decision was being reached, a Chinese nuclear submarine was uh, caught, if you will, in Japanese waters. Almost touched off an incident. There's small oil discoveries down here. The U.S. military just put, just, just had a war game with Seven aircraft carrier battle groups. Never been done this last summer. Seven aircraft carrier battle groups right down here in the South China Sea off of Taiwan. China's going wherever it can to get oil. Now, Russia said, we'll send rail cars, which they're already doing to China. There's something else going on here, and there's something moving under the carpet, because Japan is wedded to the United States. There's an emerging alliance with Russia, China, India, and Brazil, but they call it BRIC. Brazil, Russia, India and China, BRIC. You'll hear that a lot more. It's an emerging economic alliance. The Chinese want to build a pipeline across here so that their tankers don't have to come down here, and it's a much shorter route. Plus, there was a small oil discovery just made recently right here uh, off, the, off the coast of Burma. So, so the Chinese are moving in here. The Chinese are just throwing money in Africa, and you'll see that in a minute. I'm, I'm going to save Africa separately. But the Chinese just signed a 200 billion dollar deal. Two, huh, that's a lot of money. Okay. 200 billion dollar deal with Iran. Ah. For oil and natural gas. India just signed a 40 billion dollar deal with Iran for oil and natural gas. Europe is signing deals with Iran hand over fist. And I didn't even have time to make this slide. I read it last night too tired when I was going to bed. It's going to be a huge news story. The president of Iran, Mohammed al khatami is on currently a seven-nation African tour. And one story that just broke yesterday said Iran is about to close a major deal with Nigeria. Now, what do Iran and Nigeria have in common? OPEC members. And who's the other OPEC nation that has already told America to go stick it up its, you know what? Venezuela. Venezuela. Remember, I don't know if you've seen my other lectures, but 
I did this for a long time. I had to take it out. I was getting old because I have to keep myself entertained as I do this too. But I had this great clip from Reuters that said, Chavez calls, calls Bush asshole. And that was the headline of the story. <laughs> and, uh, okay, now let's go back to this game that, 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 that's in play. So this is the symbol for the yuan or the renminbi or just call it the yuan right now. That's a pending investment in Russia because Russia throwing China a carrot also said, well, we've just broken up this oil giant Yukos and uh, part of it went to uh, Yugansk I have to do the Russian right. Yugansk Neftegas, thank you. Um, that was going to go through Gazprom that he might sell off to China, allowing China to buy part of Russia's oil. Okay, so the Chinese are now, they just did this $10 billion investment with Brazil and a $20 billion investment with Argentina. And look at this, Canada. You gotta watch those damn Canadians, I'm telling you. <laughs> you know, I've been to Canada nine times in the last four years and I have yet to see a moose. I'm really upset, I wanna see a moose. The Chinese are, are, are trying to bid, I think it's, I forget the number, I'm gonna mess it up, $770 million to build a pipeline from the tar sands out to Vancouver so they can ship Canadian oil to China. All right, trivia question. Who is the, what, what country is the single largest supplier of oil to the United States? Canada. Canada. Ah. You think we're gonna let China buy a pipeline in Canada? I don't know, because look at this. China has just offered $13 billion to buy Unical. <laughs> now, why Unical? Because Unical holds almost all the exploration leases here. China's just thrown some, they had a small oil discovery and it really was small. I mean, I'm, I'm talking, 400 million barrels maybe in Cuba. Now, Cuba is a very unique uh, uh, place, but uh, China's throwing money now in Cuba to help the Cubans develop their oil and gas. And of course, excuse me, now in, in my other lectures, going back about a year now, I said you watch because we tried to overthrow Hugo Chavez two or three times in Venezuela, right? And it didn't work. There's a reason why they call him El Soro. You know what that means? Who speaks Spanish, El Soro? The fox, okay? And you know, and right after Chavez called Bush an asshole, and that was the headline, he said, if the United States tries this one more time, I'm gonna shut off all the oil to the US. <laughs> Two weeks later, a top level delegation from China was in Caracas, Venezuela. And just 10 days ago, the Chinese announced the deal that they're gonna buy 40% of Venezuela's oil. Do you hear the drums of war beating anywhere around here? Colombia is a mess, that's drugs, oil, and uh, by the way, uh, Chavez just recalled his ambassador to Bogota. Hmm. So China's investing everywhere. Now, to, how many people have seen my video, The, the Truth and Lies of 9-11, have, have the DVD? Uh, Ken brought about 40, 50 copies of, of that DVD. I recorded it at Portland State, November 2001, and baby, I, was, I pretty much hit the mark. Everything I said in November 2001 was gonna happen, and here it is. We updated it just this last year with new stuff, uh, but we put uh, all these predictions in there about everything that's happening now. Uh, and one of the things we talked about uh, I, I think in the update was what was going to happen with Venezuela. So we see now an economic war. Remember, war is the continuation of politics by other means. Politics is the continuation of economics by other means. Continuation of energy by other means. Can you see the continuum and where this continuum appears to be leading? Okay, it's going to get a lot scarier here in a minute. The Ukraine, Russia, by the way, the, the Ukrainian election is far from resolved. Uh, you have the two candidates, Yushchenko, who is, we'll, we'll call him the Bill Clinton guy, uh, and we have Yanukovych, uh, who is the uh, you know, old Stalin guy, 
But he's filed something, I, I, I saw something that he had uh, enough suits to fill up 10 dump trucks or enough documentation. He was going to tie the election up for a long time. Russia cannot afford to use, lose access to Ukraine because it's, because it's right on the Black Sea and it will shut Russia off from access to the Black Sea and also from several ports. But more importantly, it will lock Russia out of Europe. It will make Russia an Asian nation. To sound like Brzezinski, who I quoted way back in my Truth and Lies video, um, you like Brzezinski? <laughs> that, 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 that's where I did all my foreign accents, which was really a lot of fun. The, the, the German accent was extremely satisfying for me to perform on the stage, as I quoted Sibigmir <laughs> Brzezinski, yes? Anyway, Russia cannot afford to, to lose that, and the U.S. cannot afford to let them have it. So now we've got all these flashpoints that could lead to war, but you see where the biggest flames are right here.